Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Two and a Half Cents Podcast. And I'm being joined by Bradley, aka Sergeant. Yo. And we're also being joined by Chris, aka CGM. How are you guys doing? Hey, what's up? I'm doing pretty good. So what's good new I... in your lives? Well, I don't know if I told you, but my wife just had surgery on her back, right? Oh, I, I think yeah, I hinted had... at it a couple weeks ago. Yeah, she had surgery on her back, and my mother-in-law came down for a week. My mom came down for a week to help out with the kids. Okay. Well, it turns out she has to have another surgery on her back. Oh, dang. Because she has a, I'm sorry to a hear herniated that. disc in her back, so that has to be taken care of. Apparently, mm-hmm. my mother-in-law doesn't want to come down here to help out with the kids this time because she's got some major beef with me. You know, but isn't that kind of to be expected? Like, it, uh, isn't it supposed to be one of those things where you're not supposed to like your in-laws? I like my father-in-law just fine. So my mother-in-law is still, she can say what she wants. She's still pissed at me for bringing the kids and Emily down to North Carolina from New York. Why? Because we're more than a half an hour away. And she can't try to run our lives from there. Oh. She tries, but she can't do it. She's one um, of those types. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And uh, so she says all these hateful, hateful things about me now. She won't say it to me. To me, she's she's all lovey-dovey. But she'll tell your wife. One. But when she talks to my wife, I'm the laziest person on the earth. I am good for nothing. Uh it's, it's just a big mess. And I guess my big takeaway is I don't like people that are super two-faced like that. Mm-hmm. If you don't like me, you don't like me. It's fine. Whatever. Be a dick. I don't care. Yeah, but, but you can't. Gonna, I mean, if, that's family, if you're though. you're going to try and be all two-faced like that. Oh, yeah, I get that. This is me off. Yeah, but that's family, though. It's, you can't tell it by her. <laughs> <laughs> Like she came down here for a week, and when she's here, she she has to be doing something all the time. And me, I I like to play with my kids when I have time to. You know, yeah. I, that's why that's why I tried to explain today. I spend time with my kids in the mornings. It's the only time I get to see them really, because I work I work a weird I work the swing shift. Yeah, yeah, the three to eleven type. Yeah, and um, so I spend time with the kids in the morning and then when they go down for a nap, I get stuff done around the house. Like I'll mow the grass or something and, you know, take care of dishes, clean up a little bit after the kids. And then I go to work. Well, apparently that's not enough. Apparently I'm lazy because I was sitting on the couch with all three of my kids on my lap while she was doing the dishes after I told her that I would do the dishes. And I'm sure she said something along the lines like, well, it's okay. I, I got, I got the dishes. Yeah. yeah. And that that's just an example. That was, there were there were tons of things like that she while she was here. She doesn't listen to this podcast, does she? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how bad it's gotten. I don't care. I, I've 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 talked to my wife about this before. I was like, I'm, I'm, we used to get along pretty well. Like we go out to breakfast every week and just shoot shit and you know chill out before the kids came around. Yeah. And then after the kids, she's just been this complete hose beast. Just a hose beast. Nice. Haven't heard that's that in a while. That's a nice way of saying it. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, she's. I can get along with her when she's here. Mm-hmm. But like I said, when when she goes, it's she talks to Emily like I'm trash. It's just I'm not yeah. gonna have somebody talk to me like that about my kids and how I raise my kids. So how did you find out? I'm assuming your wife told you. Oh, my wife tells me. She's she's not going to hide it from me. Yeah. I mean, she loves her family, but facts are facts, yo. It's yeah, just... I hear you. Well, that's super unfortunate. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, man. It's not the greatest thing in the world. You know, like I said, Plus, I think my wife, my wife, if it's anything like mine, it's at least a six week recovery with four weeks, not being able to pick up the kids or anything. It's, it's, it's a yeah, very that, painful process. Yeah. We're, and we're at two years old. That's hard for the kids to understand. Yeah. Yeah. I think I speak for all of us when I say all the podcast viewers, as well as myself and Chris are wishing M a, uh, a speedy, 
uh, recovery. Yeah, man. So, I'll let her know you said something. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. She appreciates it. She knows you guys. She she's talked to you guys a couple times. Yeah, yeah. But that's uh that's unfortunate. I think yeah. back issues aside from chest problems are probably some of the most serious. I know like they say like having chest issues are the like that's she she's what EMT, right? So like she knew she knows about Well now she's a stay at home mom, but she, yeah, she's well, yeah. she's she's a trained EMT. Exactly. So you know, I don't take back issues lightly. Yeah, I but mean, it, especially when you you've carried triplets. Oh yeah. But you know what's good is God forbid anything ever happened, even minor, she knows how to jump in and help the kids before, you know. Even no, a minor no, thing. She, she like <laughs> it's hard to explain. She when it comes to the kids and how their schedule works, like we have our kids on a schedule. Otherwise it'd be complete freaking chaos here. Yeah. It's yeah. pretty much chaos anyway, but it's, <laughs> it's organized chaos. And uh, so we have them on a schedule. It's been the same schedule for at least a year. Mm-hmm. She gets, she gets in the, she gets in with the kids and she's watching the kids and she completely forgets everything we've done over the past year. Well, Really? Like twelve thirty, one o'clock, the kids get lunch. Who gets what? It doesn't matter. They're all eating the same thing. I don't care who sits where. Hmm. And then uh, it's like, what time do they go take a nap? It's like whenever you get tired of them or after <laughs> their lunch. It's like, I mean, seriously though, like three two-year-olds is a lot, and it. Oh yeah. It's hard to want to, like to not to not want to be one of those people on Jerry Springer that has tried to sell their kids. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. I love my kids. I'll never get rid of them for anything. But uh, some t- I'm That's telling hilarious. you, kids having kids, it's like one minute you want to you, you understand why people shake their babies, and then the next minute you're like, oh, I, can't. I love you to death. Don't do, don't ever leave me. <laughs> <laughs> He's so cute. Oh, and it's just uh, especially like the past couple of days. My daughter is my daughter Bailey, who looks just like her mom did when she was her age. Mm-hmm. Has been the biggest daddy's girl, which is rare because she's always been a mommy's girl. So she's been super clingy to me and like snuggling with me and stuff. When we go when we go to watch a movie or something, like we we'll watch Toy Story or something, yeah, she'll want to sit on my lap and. Watch the movie. It's 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 cute, and it doesn't really happen that much with her because she's like I said, she's a mommy's girl. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Me growing up, I I was like a, I was really clingy to my mom. But then like I I started doing like guy activities with my dad, like fishing and stuff like that, and you know that I I quickly transitioned to being more like my dad. And I, as I was growing up, I'm like, you know what? I know they say that kids grow up to be like their parents, but I'm going to be different. I'm, I'm going to try to outdo my dad. And here we are. I'm 31. I'm turning 32 this year, uh, this September. And everyone tells me I'm like a splitting image of my dad. So you really can't escape it. And not that I was trying to escape. I was trying to do something different against the mold, but... Well, sometimes I wonder if, if I'd have stayed with my mom instead of going to live with my dad when I was a kid, and mm-hmm. then my mom kind of dropped off the face of the earth until I got married, um, if I would have turned out different and been like a mama's boy. Yeah, that could be. Like, I, di- I didn't, like, my, my mom and my dad split up when I was f- five or six. Mm-hmm. We were back and forth between who was going to take us and who wasn't, because my dad was in the military, so it was... It was kind of it was kind of a ridiculous situation because there was no way any court in its right mind at that time was going to give my dad custody of me and my brother. Oh, okay. And being in the military and on top of being like special operations and being gone all the time. Yeah. Um. So I went to live with my mom until I was about eleven, and then I got in a fight with the neighbor's kid, and ended up breaking something on their parents' car. So of course, like anybody else, they would they called the police to to have it taken care of, and 
my mom freaked out and decided to send me to live with my dad. Well, my dad was deployed all the time, so I basically lived with my grandmother. <laughs> and so, was you like a totalitarian? I did, I did, no, no. My grandmother was was a sweet person. She uh, was actually a pretty sad story with that one because I was my first deployment right after I got into Iraq. Yeah, she had had lung cancer before I left, mm-hmm. and it wasn't that bad yet. So right before we went from Kuwait to Iraq, I got a phone call from the Red Cross saying that my grandmother had taken a turn for the worst. Oh wow! So I called did my they, did they called let my me uncle. Come home? That's that's what I'm getting to. So I called my uncle because my uncle lived with her. lives He lived with his, with his mom and dad until he was at well, least he still would if they were alive. But um, <laughs> but uh, I called him trying to see what's going on. He's like, oh, no, she's fine. She's coming home. She's coming home. I'm like, oh, good. And then I can go cancel my emergency leave. So I did. That was a dumb mistake because she was coming home for hospice. Oh. oh that... And by the time I called my dad and asked him to clarify what was going on, he was like, no, she's coming home to die. I was like, oh, fuck. So I went and tried to get my leave reinstated. It was a whole big mess. I ended up flying into New York in December of 03. We had just gotten into Kuwait in November 03. I flew home December 03. I got stuck in Spain for 12 hours while the plane was refueling and getting ready to go. Got to New York because they flew me into Fort Drum. And then uh, went and packed my stuff and we got like a, a bad snowstorm. And uh, In Kuwait? No, this was in New York when I got in New York, back. In New York, New York. Yeah. So I got to New York first because they fly you back to your duty station. And then... I went and got went to pack up some clothes to fly to drive down because I was young and dumb and didn't have any money, so I was driving down, and uh, we got this huge snowstorm, and my girlfriend at the time, well, actually my wife at the time, she uh she kept begging me not to go, begging me to stay home. I was like, no, I gotta go, I gotta go. Yeah, and it got to the point where her parents actually had to fight me out of the car because I was going to take off. And my father-in-law at the time, he did something to the car where it wouldn't fuck. It wouldn't move anymore. Like it was, I had the engine going and then it just wouldn't move. Like he popped up in the hood and I was going to back up and he pulled something out of the car. It wouldn't, it wouldn't go. Was it the spark plugs or something? It died. Like he killed the car. He basically just unhooked the battery. He yanked the battery kit, battery terminal off. Hey. So I couldn't go, but it turned out it was probably a good thing because there was a big accident on 81, which was the highway I'd take all the way down into Pennsylvania, I think. Okay. And uh, it was like a 10, 11 car pileup, like 13 fatalities. <laughs> See, everything happens for a reason, man. That's what I believe. So. But I missed my grandmother's funeral, and my brother and my cousin ended up having to bury them having to bury my grandmother because uh, her life insurance didn't, they covered the, the funeral, but they didn't cover the burial. That's unfortunate. I know that was, that's usually I'm sorry to hear a that, pretty man. costly that's expense. Terrible. But it all worked. I mean, it all worked out in the, in the, in the end because I didn't die in a car crash going down there. And it was, it was a sad time for me. I was in a, like, that whole year was a pretty bad time for me. And just for a frame of reference, what year was this? This was 2003. 2003, okay. It was my first deployment. And halfway through, I got I was working on getting divorced after being married for only six months. <laughs> yeah, well, it's. I'm glad you weren't in that uh, pileup, though, because that would have... Yeah, that and that's thing. that's a that's what I was getting to is that everything happens for a reason, you know. Yeah, I mean I get it now, but then I was I was super depressed about it. it was just like I had a the f- acting first sergeant at Fort Drum actually put me on like a suicide watch for a while because they thought I was depressed that bad. I wasn't gonna kill myself over that, but dang, they thought it was a possibility. So were you? I mean, it's kind of a personal question, but like, 
you don't have to answer, but like, were you making any kind of like suicidal ideations that they would think? No, that? no, no. It's just, I kind of stopped talking to people for a long time and just coming back from a deployment. And I like, I wasn't even really deployed yet. We had just gotten into Kuwait when I can't, when I had to come home. Um, they thought maybe I was going to do something stupid. Gotcha. By the way, also had a police escort when I got back from Iraq after my deployment because they thought I was going to kill my ex-wife. What? <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, yeah they, she cheated on me, and I guess they were monitoring my phone calls. And I told her, I'll fuck, I, said, I said, I'll fucking kill you when I get home. Better oh lock your doors and watch your back. <laughs> so the first sergeant had MPs so they, outside they, my barracks. They room. intercepted your calls. Yeah, they, they, they monitor all the phone calls just to make sure you're not she giving did. away anything you're not supposed to. Oh, I was thinking she reported you. No, no. They monitor all that stuff. Dang, dude. <laughs> but I wasn't actually going to do it. I was just really mad at the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people say things out of anger all the time. like. But there was there was a possibility that I could do it, is what I'm saying. It's like, I wouldn't do it, but they thought that I might. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> and you were you were more saying it out of anger and hurt than you were. Oh yeah, I I've never called somebody so many names. <laughs> <laughs> and and didn't feel didn't, didn't feel bad about it in the least. <laughs> I called her very very mean hateful names. Well, I can understand that. I mean, that's somebody <laughs> that you promised to share your life with, and then they. She literally puts a dagger in your back and heart. And this is what happens when you marry somebody for money, kids. Oh, is that what it was? <laughs> I was getting ready to get deployed. We're like, oh, yeah, we can get BAH and tax free. <laughs> Sign me up. Because <laughs> we'd only been dating for like a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. And the thought of marriage had never crossed my mind until then. I was like, oh, I get extra money for being married. Let's do this. Turns out that's not the greatest idea. So kids, so, so follow, follow don't my, do it for financial learn from reasons. My, learn from my failures. <laughs> it actually ended up costing me money in the long run because the army, when you're separated, will make you pay cost of living for your for your spouse while you're still not divorced. Okay. So six hundred dollars out of my paycheck every 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 two weeks went to her free money. She didn't have to hey. do anything for it. Ooh. That sucks. Oh, and you, <laughs> this is taking up a lot of the podcast. My life story. Here we go. That's uh, always interesting. <laughs> so I'm with my my wife now, and we're sitting in our first apartment. Our first apartment was a cheap apartment. It was it was good for us because we were a young couple. We just needed something cheap. It was six hundred dollars a month with utilities included. Um, we lived above a funeral home. Ew. How does that work? It's perfect, dude. You're downstairs. Neighbors are the quietest you'll ever get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you're dead. <laughs> but, uh, so we're sitting there on the couch one day watching a movie. I don't remember what we're watching, but uh, I get a knock. I hear the doorbell ring. I'm like, what's this? So I go down and I check, because I wasn't expecting anybody. I go down and check, see who it was. Just some lady at the door. Yeah, can I help you? She's like, are you Bradley Barry? I was like, yep. You've been served. I got, I got a child support papers from my ex-wife. Oh boy! For a kid that my wife would later find out is half black. Oh, perfect. yeah. You've seen me. I'm not black, and that lady, my ex-wife, is Italian and is Italian and Irish. So I was like, how'd that happen? Also not black. Two of these things don't make the other. <laughs> yeah, something doesn't add up here. I ended up just having to send a picture of myself, uh, my deployment orders, and my leave orders from Afghanistan to uh, to the judge, and he sent me an apology letter. <laughs> so we're sorry to have wasted your time, sir. Uh, <laughs> this will be handled by the by the local police department. If you'd like, we'll press charges. 
I was like, no, I just don't want her in my life anymore. Well, that's good that they had that in mind to help you out. <laughs> so that's my life story. And then I had kids. Then I got with my wife. We got married, and I had three two. I had three little girls, and that's where I'm at now. Well, cool, man. Well, I, I I don't know I don't know about Chris, but I thought that was pretty interesting. I never. I too. I've, yeah, we've absolutely. been we've been friends for a few years now, and time. I've never yeah I've never heard that part of the story. I've heard bits and pieces of. Uh, like You've probably heard the whole thing, thing. But not all at once. Yeah, not at all at all at once. And now the viewers have the luxury of uh, having that whole story now. So definitely now appreciate. Now they know it. you a little. Now they know you better. Yeah, and if anything, we know now that you're half black. So, well, um, yeah, there's that. <laughs> I'm also a quarter Native American, a quarter uh, Irish, oh, and three quarters Italian. So, uh, so Chris, what's <laughs> what's new with you this week? Uh, not a whole lot, just grinding, and you know. Are you buying Madden wait. or what? I did. I bought Madden with EA Access, but here's my problem. It's EA Sports, and I, I, you know, I'm not going to go into the 2K rant. That's another time. But I bought the EA Access for the five dollars for uh, ten hours. Yeah. You know, I mean, come on, give me, give me fifteen. But anyways, um, <laughs> and it's cheaper to do the EA Access and get the ten percent off than it is to buy the game. Or I wouldn't have done it. So you, you know, so I, you bought the digital copy. Yeah, I bought the digital copy, and it was like fifty bucks. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, but weren't you always the type to say that you wouldn't buy digital copies of games? I used to buy discs, and then I realized, for whatever reason, when there's a disc, I have one disc right now in the NHL 19, but I noticed like the processor and the fans sound like they're working 10 times harder mm-hmm. when uh i have a disc in than digital yeah i've gone fully digital i back when i did still buy uh physical copies what i would yeah. do is um i'd install them to my console that way but, that way the disc no longer spins while it's in the tray but see you can't do that on ps4 i don't think because, like, if I try and play it without the disc, it's like, put the damn disc in. No, and no, then no. And if I try and download the digital, it's like, uh, one time, like, there was a digital copy and I had the disc and it was like two bucks, right? I think it was NBA 2K. So I was like, for two bucks to get rid of the disc, uh, I'll yeah, do this. Yeah, I, I don't think but you're understanding like, quite what I'm talking about. Oh. So... When I say you don't need the disc, you still need it. it. The console needs to recognize that the disc is in the tray, but it just yeah, yeah. won't spin it because the whole the contents of the CD itself are installed to the console. Yeah, it spins it up just far enough to get the uh, that anti piracy well, code. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you you definitely it's not one of those things where you can just rent the game one time and it never have to mm-hmm. you know buy it again or rent it again but my problem with ea is so i buy the i buy this and figure okay the game comes out friday i'll have my 10 hours till tuesday when i get early release but no ea says f you if you don't pay us the 20 dollars, you don't get three days free release and i just said screw you i'm not paying 16.50 and here's the thing i mean 650 a day it's a little over six fifty a day to have the damn game. No, yeah, and and, and the only reason I can think that they do it is because they're they're cash horse, and there's no other reason to not allow the three day early access to pre order. And I get that you can make the argument. Well, back in the day, the demo was only the Super Bowl that you had to play over and over. I get that. I get that. I get the full game. But why should I be restricted because I don't want to drop or don't have an extra 20 bucks? So here's, here's my comment on that. And my stance has changed drastically over the years. I used to be a guy that was like hardcore against people um, 
playing mutt right i'd have campaigns where i'd run be like pretty much shaming people for playing mutt because you're literally playing or paying money to pay uh, to play a game you already have uh, but now i've i've somewhat adjusted my standpoint on that to the point that it's like hey man it's it's your money at the end of the day, yeah. you spend it how you feel seem uh, how you um, seem that you want to do it. You know, who am I to say? You know, you, you're yeah, I'm not the one who slaved away at work to to get that that scratch. So people spending microtransactions on mud is different than EA thinks. Unless you pay us an extra twenty bucks, we're not giving you the three day early. Access. Okay, so you keep bringing up the twenty bucks price point, and and I understand that. But let's say the price was a hundred dollars to play the game three days early. To me, I wouldn't spend a dollar to play the game three days early. But if someone wants no, I to, wouldn't either. if so, if someone wants to and they have the means to do it, then more power to them. Go ahead and yeah, get. Yeah, and I get that. But I'm calling out EA and saying that they shouldn't make me force me to pay the twenty dollars. Nobody's a dollar. It's or not five dollars. A... Fifty dollars, whatever it is, to play it early. Yeah, Whether but you pre-order the game, whatever edition you should get the three days. That's what I'm. N- nobody saying. is forcing you to do anything. You don't have to. It's a luxury to get the game three days early. You don't have it's to a do it. For buying those higher, those higher tier versions of the game. Yeah, you don't have to get the game early. That's a call that's, you're making. But what I'm saying is, I should get it buying the standard edition. <clears throat> that's what I'm arguing. Is I. I've bought the damn game every year since Madden 99. This is what, my 21st year buying it? And I know they don't care, but, you know, it pushes people like me away when I all they say is, it's kind of like, the, I feel like I'm the cable company that, you know, customer, where, you know, the person who walks in off the street pays 50 bucks, but I'll pay 150 for having the service for five years. It's the reverse loyalty. I I will say, um, especially this time of year, it seems like it happens every year. I am totally against the campaign they run on on Twitter where um, they give away Madden codes. I am firmly of the belief that Madden codes to the game should be given with, uh, with respect to merit. Like, hey, has this person been putting on for EA, uh, res- you know, Representing the brand well online on their YouTube channel or on their Twitch channel. If so, let's let's give them a code. What does it? That's free advertisement. What's the what's where's the harm yeah, in yeah. that? But for you to totally avoid that angle and say, hey, you know, just go ahead and like and retweet this tweet, and then you have a like a one and a half percent chance of winning. I think that's dumb. I definitely think the uh, code thing should be merit based. Because there's a lot of people who deserve it. I'm not going to just say I well, deserve it, but there's a lot of like really good content creators uh, that I associate with, and it's like, why does this person prop- have to go buy a copy of, of, of this game? I get what you're saying, but then you're going to get into a pissing contest on what the metrics of merit are, and they're going to, you know, they give one to you, right? And then, you know, some other YouTuber who strings mad and going to be like, I have twice the viewers as Raining Ravens, and I st- and ninety percent of my streams are mad, and where only eighty are his. How did he get a copy? This is BS. Yeah, you know, you, and that. So that's. I'm not saying it's there. a perfect system. I don't have an answer to this. Uh, I don't have a solution, but I'm I'm just identifying a problem that exists. Oh, I agree. I think they should do like some like merit based, and some maybe random. You know, maybe. They're going to give out a hundred codes, fifty-fifty. Yeah, you know. But but yeah. regardless, if I don't get a code, I'm going to get the game. I'm not one of those people who says, you know. I feel like the people who say that they're not going to buy Madden for because of a personal gripe are the same type of people who who uh, vowed to leave America and move to Canada when Trump got elected. I feel like it's exact <laughs> same mindset, you know. Like, no, it's dude, real. you're. You're still going to buy the game. You are still going to be playing it for six months out of the year. You know? Yeah, but I, I, I think that, you know, there's people who just nitpick and pick the game apart. 
but I I don't think that people like me, you, Purple Swordfish, who have played the game for 20 plus years, when we say, say, you know, they still haven't fixed the glitch where the uh, receiver runs through the end zone. We point something like that out. They still haven't fixed the defensive passing, which they did work on this year, or something mm-hmm. like that. I don't think that that's just being a douche about the game. After uh, criticism, and I think then there's just criticism to just being a hater. And I think you, me, and most people, but 90% of probably what we say is constructive criticism. Yeah, absolutely. Where there's just certain people who EA could have the perfect game and they'd find, they'd say, you know, well, they don't show the coach enough. You know, <laughs> they'd find something. That sounds like something you would say, though. Yeah, that I, if, actually, I think that's something verbatim you've said, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Wrong. They took the referees off the field. I'm not buying it this year. That's pretty much what you've said before. I'm pretty sure. I said something about the referees because I, they say if it's in the game, it's in the game. That's just EA Sports' motto. I'm just pointing out it's not true. That's all I'm saying. I don't know. I think it's easy to nitpick. Um, if it's in the game, it's in the game. I agree, but... I think it's increasingly, as the game continues to improve, I think it's also increasingly easier to take that angle of nitpicking the game. So I appreciate Madden for what it is because I've seen I've seen some pretty bad years of Madden, some pretty unplayable games. And for what it is right now, I'd say it's probably the most true to life game, football game we've we've got at our fingertips right now. That's just my opinion, though. Well, I currently I like this one. I like Madden 20 so far. I do too. But, but I also liked Madden 19 during the open beta too. So, Madden 19 wasn't bad though. I don't. I still can't put my finger on it, but it just didn't seem good. I don't know what was bad about it, but I like mole asks all the time. So what didn't you like about it? I was like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember him coming to my, one of my Madden streams, which by the way, shout out to a uh, mole, a uh, big friend of the channel. Um, he asked me, you know, how come you don't stream Madden anymore? And this was back in December. I've usually it doesn't, I don't lose interest in Madden just a couple months after the game comes out. So that was kind of unusual for me. He's like, what is it about the game that makes you not want to stream it or play it anymore? And I honestly didn't know what to tell him because I couldn't really put my finger on it. But then again, it wasn't just me. There was a lot of other content creators who couldn't put a finger on it and be like, all right, so A, B, C, and D are wrong with the game. I don't know what what to tell you. Yeah, I mean... This one it seems like it plays more fluidly. I mean, I've I've run into a couple of bad glitches, but that's stuff that'll probably end up getting patched out. Cause one of them was really bad. I, I saw a YouTube of video of um, the rotisserie leg glitch. Yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's so bad. Oh man! He caught the ball and stayed in midair for a long time. He kept getting hit, but it wouldn't like the animation wouldn't show him getting hit. He just kept staying in the air, and you could watch his leg just spin. Yeah, like a rotisserie. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that I've noticed that I really think they need to fix is I've noticed, like, every game I play, there's a ton of ineligible receiver downfield. I haven't um, gotten that yet. I get that call a lot. I'm playing my I've, last 20 minutes right now. <laughs> I've oh. seen that. I've seen that a lot. And the only other thing I would say needs to be tweaked, I wouldn't say it's broken, is the pass rush. It seems like the defenders overpower the O-line at a little too high of a rate. And then and I get sacked all the time. And I know maybe I should get rid of the ball sooner, but sometimes it's like I can't. You know, there's the guy. And 
I just think maybe that the pass rush this year is a little too good. Yeah, but in real life, how long do quarterbacks have to throw? Well, I'm not saying, uh, like I said, I'm saying tweak it a little. I'm not saying it's broken. I'm saying tweak it. Just maybe a, a notch on the dial. Dial it back a little. And I think it would be perfect. Just yeah. put the game on arcade mode and play against the AI because that's all you're going to do, Scrub. Yeah, I mean, Chris, you play only offline games, so. No, I play some on. Oh, really? Yeah, I told you the other day when I. Uh, uh, last year I played a couple games oh, online. Oh, a couple? That's awesome. A handful. And oh. Last time I played, that's adorable. I was up 14 <laughs> nothing on that's adorable. my first three that's... drives. And I got uh, and I got a rage quit. That's so cool, Chris. And that's why oh, we're geez. getting separate checks when you come for. We're sushi. not getting separate checks. <laughs> I am flying out to DC. I'm ordering as much sushi as my heart can please, and you are paying for it all. <laughs> we'll see about that. If the if the car clears. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you would be that guy too. <laughs> you would. <laughs> well, so. that would that would. Then we'll see who's paying. No, it's still you. You're paying. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> the uh, the football season is going to be upon us soon. Uh, this was the last week at the time of us recording this podcast. It is. Uh, july 29th which is the week of we got three more days and then we have uh football thursday night football so i'm happy i the, to announce that football is back um this is the best time of year for me this and christmas i would say are my favorite times of the year um, i hate christmas i have to spend way too much money on christmas oh yeah see i i don't have to spend any money on christmas so i love it well, my kids' birthdays are the week before Christmas, too. Oh, yeah. So you're taking a double hit. Yeah. Yeah. That 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 can be rough. I can see why you don't like it. It's expensive. It is expensive, yeah. But they'll grow out of it, and hopefully soon you don't have to buy any gifts or anything like that. Oh, they get something. They got to they gotta open something up on their birthday. On their birthday, yeah, but maybe not for Christmas. Oh, yeah. they still got to open up something on Christmas. I mean, they're kids, man. What are we going to do? Not, not give them something? Yeah. Bro. That's, that's, <laughs> that's double pretty R messed up. You. That's messed up. You are a cheap dude. I'm not you cheap. You could kids something for, for Christmas. Come on. I'm broke and I'm not that cheap. I'm not cheap. <laughs> no, you're a classy broad. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah, pay for all my sushi, but I'm not cheap. I'm not okay. <laughs> me having you pay for my sushi is purely no, it, it, because I'm going to be a guest in your town. And guess what? When who's you're a guest, the one with the who's the one with the six figure government? I don't salary. have a six figure. You're such an idiot. When you're in town, I, mean, the I will FBI also pay, pick up the tab. Well. When you're in town, I will pick up your tab, Chris. You heard that, right? No, you want to take me to the Heart Attack Grill so you can get your spanking. <laughs> what? Take me to the Heart, heart Attack Grill. <laughs> your battle spanking. I saw that video. <laughs> okay, first of all, the food was really good there. <laughs> and you intentionally didn't finish it. <laughs> it was so good you didn't finish it. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows I'm right. You are literally the biggest thorn in my side, Chris. Bro, well, you, you have a pretty I'm right. easy life. I'm just saying you know I'm right. I don't know that you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying that. It doesn't make it any more true. But. So you guys ready for the NFL season? Yeah, I've been ready since the Super Bowl last year. Yeah, same. I'm so ready. Um, Do you guys have any tickets to any games this year or not yet? I yeah, don't I got, think I'm going to buy kids. this year. And, you know, I, I usually look at getting, you know, cheap tickets to Redskins game a year. 
But they should all a, be cheap. Fedex, but a FedEx field is an s hole. B, you know you can curse on this podcast, right? Well, yeah, but still. Uh, B, um, the parking is hell. C, they, why don't you just take an Uber? The food, the food <laughs> is ridiculous. Because that's fifty bucks each <laughs> way. Don't, why don't you eat before you go? These are all simple issues that you're making a big deal out of. Yeah, the food is expensive then, at stadiums. That's why you eat before you then, go to the game. Then you get there and you watch a and you watch a crappy football team go three and out, and then you put on our defense, and they and they give up a. You are a literally the guy. Play you're the worst fan ever to find a complaint. You know what is what is a diff what is the exact opposite of someone who always finds a silver lining in things? That's you, well, I'll, Chris. I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. Pessimist. I'll tell a you pessimist. Why. Thank you. Since my dad years ago, my dad. I think I was either in high school or home from college. I don't remember. Which. I think I was in high school or just. Anyways, it was years ago. Redskins were like three and two, whatever. And they were playing the 0 and 5 Titans, who were just god awful, right? Okay. So my dad gets online and he's like, I found these cheap tickets on StubHub to the Redskins tomorrow. Do you want to go? And I said, and they're playing the Titans. And I'm like, yeah, let's go. And they had, they were favored to win big. Okay. We get there, we watch the game, they get their ass kicked. Do then you show go, up to an NFL game? Knowing that they're going to get a win, or you're you show up to an NFL game hoping that your team does the best they can and maybe get a, a win. Because sounds like when you're playing the 0 and 5 Titans, I expect you to win. Anyways, we go to a restaurant after I order something. I'm sorry, sir, we're out of that. So then I say, okay, I'll have this. They come back a second time. I'm sorry, sir, we're out of that. This is just the whole. F and day. So I ordered some. I said, well, do you have a cheeseburger? Just give me a cheeseburger. Or whatever it was. So I'm down to like my third option. Then we leave there. My brother. My brother's like lactose intolerant. And I think he had a cheeseburger. And he didn't know it at the time. So he's dying. So my dad pulls into a gas station. He. They, all they had is a porta john, and then he gets himself stuck in the porta john. Oh my god! Well, this sounds like an amazing comedy. <laughs> and all you need, all I'm, you need, is somebody to come over and tip the porta john over. I'm still waiting to to hear where to, to, for you to get to the part where this is the Redskins' fault. Because they lost, so I'm in a pissed off mood to start with. H- how is that the Redskins' problem? Because they played a crappy, shitty Titans team that hadn't won a game, and they played down to their level like they always do to inferior opponents. Well, what did, did had, you just scare your won, mic I away? Been, I would have been so mad when the restaurant was out of my food, but it was just—it was just like you. It was like you had a scab, and you just kept picking and picking and picking, and now you finally draw blood, and it's a geyser. <laughs> Shooting out. Oh my God. Blood. <laughs> Such a I have a feeling like Chris. Chris's default setting is pissed off. Yes, for sure. No, no, I'm not. I'm... Have you have you ever liked anything about anything? <laughs> yeah. He likes the basement. It's like a documentary for him. He loves that. No, I just wanted to watch that movie. That's all. Because I thought the clown was entertaining. No, the only clown here is you. With that being said, this is going to conclude this week's edition of the podcast. We appreciate you guys listening. Um, huge shout out to uh, to Mole. He was unable to make it. He had jury duty in the morning. Uh, from behalf of all of us here on the podcast and the viewers, we are wishing M a speedy and healthy recovery. And until next time, this is Sarge, Chris, and myself, Double R out. See you guys next time. Go Redskins, or else Chris will have a hernia.